Are we ready? One, two, three, we're on. Welcome everyone. Today we are having a special guest by the name of Richard Ingrid, who is going to speak to us about marketing strategies, including Google Plus, and how those strategies and what he does with his company. Um, Good Vibrations. Good Vibrations. He's, he just changed the name of his company from Off on Mondays to Good Vibrations. He's a marketing strategist, and he is our special guest tonight. Or this afternoon, presenting on strategies and using marketing, yeah. social media, and without further ado, take it away. Thank Richard. you very See much. You. Uh, hi again, my name is Richard Avert. Mm -hmm. uh, my company is Good Vibrations Consulting. We're a strategic marketing firm that helps small businesses and startups with their marketing needs. Uh, usually, as you know, a lot of small businesses can't afford an agency of record, and so we kind of fill that void. Um, actually, uh, to correct you, uh, I have a restaurant background and I had a blog called Off on Monday. It was a blog I'd written about the uh, triumphs and tragedies of the, the restaurant business and most of them were, uh, you know, some useful knowledge that you could apply to any business and some were just some entertaining stories. So, um, Basically, I'm here to talk to you today um, about how um, I used Google Hangouts uh, in a marketing campaign I used in a previous life. Um, before I started my own company about a month ago, I was the uh, executive uh, by operation, vice president of operations for Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar with Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue, they're a restaurant brand in North Carolina, 34 locations. Uh, the combination of quick service and full service. Um, and the thing uh, the company hang, hung their hat on is each location made their own food. Uh, it was a signature North Carolina product, uh, Eastern North Carolina vinegar-based barbecue. So um, basically what I'm here to tell you that today is how I uh, developed a marketing campaign for that company and orchestrated uh, Google Hangouts into that. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably about 15 minutes until we start talking about Google Hangouts. So I got to kind of kind of paint the picture of how it comes available. And also, I want to preface this: when it comes to Q and A time, do not ask me technical questions about Google Hangouts. That is all in the call <laughs> about lower thirds and all that stuff. That is not me. I'm the strategist, and I uh, I can tell you how to do it. And I usually find people like Nicole who will kind of help you execute. That. So just want to preface: I'll be real honest with you. Probably a lot more of you folks know more about me, more about Google Hangouts than I do. But um, I'm, but that's what makes the world go round. So, any that being said, okay, Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. Like I said, we were a uh, a uh, restaurant brand that served um, fried chicken, barbecue, taste salad, coleslaw. Uh, these are generally foods that one would consume when attending a football game, uh, and that art, as you may have known, is called tailgating. Uh, tailgating is very popular, uh, particularly in the southeast. Uh, you know, people buy some food for a game, eat, and have a good time. Uh, one of our main competitors was a company you probably heard of, Bojangles. Bojangles uh, has this uh, niche on that market. In fact, they created a package called the Tailgate Special. Um, so um, I had a major competitor there who was a lot bigger than I was and who had a bigger war chest as far as advertising. So I had to figure out how to be competitive with them, and I, I really wanted to get a, a niche in that market because I would go uh, on Saturday mornings, I would go to Bojangles and see him just lined out the door uh, picking up tailgate specials uh, for the big game and everything. And it's a high price ticket item, you know, it's 20 to $30 uh, depending on what you get. So it's a lucrative market. Um, so. What I did is I composed a marketing campaign, a strategy, how to compete against the big boys, basically. And I kind of use that advantage of a smaller company. We're a little more nimble, a little more agile. So how can I use those things? And also, how can I use some things that um, uh, some marketing tactics are less expensive, but quite frankly, have a better return on investment and more trackable? I mean, I don't have, I didn't have the type of budget to afford Scotty McCreary to, uh, <laughs> on a commercial, you know. But uh, I'm 
pretty uh, new to the people who were, so that kind of helped that to get an idea. So let's say uh, the first thing I did was established a positioning statement or slogan. And the slogan is just not a tailgate without the barbecue. Now, two things happen here in the slogan. Number one, establish the separation point in us and them. And that's the class defining your separation point, repeating the message. And that was it. We served what Bojangles did, barbecue. And, uh, you know, they already had a tailgate, already a package. And I kind of, quite frankly, um, got on the coattails of that. So when people thought tailgate, they thought Bojangles, but I kind of took that slogan. It's just not a tailgate without the barbecue. So I had a slogan. And what was great about this product is as far as, you know, I can track the success of it through Google Analytics and downloads and hits and likes and those types of things. And of course, there was always the cash register, the sales increases. But also, I could specifically check one item, how many tailgate specials were sold. So on the product mix, I could get and find out the increase compared to last year. So this was very trackable product. So the next, I guess the centerpiece of this whole campaign was a microsite I created, just a small website. And the website was called realtailgate.com, which at first I thought, I couldn't believe it was available. I'm surprised some, you know, beer company or Weber Grills or somebody. So I just locked in you know, five years you know, on that, you know, I couldn't go daddy. So not letting this go. Um, so I developed realtailgate.com. It was a very simple page. Uh, I kind of had an about us, uh, our locations. I had a coupon for the tailgate special. Um, I had a one page I always thought was fun. It was kind of a case study, kind of a tongue in cheek, like how to properly tailgate, what to do. Um, had some social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook. Um, but basically, um, you know, the idea was uh, to get users to this page and find out the menu to get the coupon. Had a list of upcoming games. And, you know, I was make sure, you know, we're a North Carolina based company. So um, it was the local games, UNC State, Duke, East Carolina, etc. So <clears throat> I had the slogan, I had the I had the uh, website, and I did a little bit of radio, but I don't know if you've ever bought radio or television before, and that can be quite expensive. And I'm a big believer if um, uh, repetition is the key and consistency and frequency. Like I'm, not, I'm smart enough to know that I can't buy a month's worth of radio TV and spend Katie bar the door. It's all about repetition. You know, you got minimum three months, and I, quite frankly, I'd suggest six months. But any kind of any kind of radio or television or anything like that, or newspaper, it's it's got to be at least three to six months to get a good gauge. Um, <clears throat> So we had a little bit of a budget, but and we wanted a little bit of presence, but we didn't have the kind of monster budget that Bojangles did. So I kind of had to be clever about it, and I, I kind of developed what I call a smoke and mirrors tactic. It seemed like we were everywhere, but we weren't. So I did a little bit of radio. I did a little bit of tele uh, not television, uh, newspaper. When I did newspaper, I did local communities. Um, and then I needed something that was ours. And I needed something that was original, and I needed something that uh, was trackable. And my first thought was uh, one of the local radio stations had a new host. They were getting ready to uh, launch. This gentleman named Steve Logan. He used to coach in East Carolina. He has a huge following, and they were going to have a whole Saturday morning show, and they presented us ideas. He can be the exclusive title sponsor. All the mentions and the intros and everything, just whole, but it was thirty thousand dollars, and uh, we didn't have that kind of money. Uh, so I was sat there, kind of frustrated. You know, how can we have some original content? How can we have something to bring in customers within the context of something they're passionate about, football? So I actually got my idea from a. a strange place. It's not the restaurant business. I actually got my idea from Netflix. Now Netflix at the time, well, they were about six months off of going through some really bad times. They raised the prices. 
uh, there was a mass revolt. Uh, they, I think, they tried some different kind of uh, different format. It was just it was awful. <laughs> and then about six months, they said, "Hey, we're going to do something new. We're going to develop our own content with a show called House of Cards." And everybody's like, "Okay." And then all of a sudden, they got Kevin Spacey. I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it turned out to be a pretty good show. Underlying theme here: content is king. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to develop my own show. Now, what's something that's similar to a radio that I could have radio? That I've already had some commercial spots written for traditional radio that I could play my radio, and I could have uh, people talking about football and kind of in a, in a Machiavellian way, kind of talk about us and a podcast. So I got two guys. One was a uh, they're both local guys who've been on this radio, and I said, hey guys, would you mind recording? Uh, our show once a week talking about the, the teams that we service, Carolina State, Duke. Um, and just talk about the week ahead, the what's going on. Uh, an intro with us, you know, welcome to the realtailgate.com football show. I'm Dimitri, this is Rasheem. Wow, what a week last week over the weekend, blah, blah, blah. Uh, within the podcast, they would have our 30 second spots, which you're in the radio. And then, without being too intrusive, they would cleverly mention our name. East Carolina is traveling to Chapel Hill this week. Make sure you stop by our Morrisville location and pick up the tailgate special. So again, it wasn't um, shoehorned in. It was more natural flow. Now, how are we going to promote this? Well, we used to, uh, you know, I was fortunate I had two platforms here. I had the Smithfields. I had the brand, the power of the brand, the Smithfields. I could leverage to their accounts, the Facebook, Twitter, and I had the real tailgate, Twitter, and everything. So, put it out there, took off like that. Downloads, I think we started about a thousand a week. And this is off the first. And this is pretty good off of, of you know, something fresh that we didn't have a, a lot of money to advertise with. So, but what I did was I made sure on Twitter and Facebook to connect with some people with some major circle influences. And, and quite frankly, just talk to them. Just be friendly with them. That's the thing about Twitter on the side note here. That's social media in general. Social. One of my best friends described Twitter is like cheers. Mm -hmm. You walk in, you know everybody, you talk to them, and you just you get to know them very well. You develop relationships. I've developed relationships with people who I've probably never met in any other walks of life. So, you know, I started getting these people behind it. So each week we had this football show, and all of a sudden they started bringing in guests, coaches, analysts, former players, and it started to snowball to something big. Now, here I was, it's a once a week show, and I had this real tailgate thing, right? So after, of course, when a show came out, hey, check out the new show, or tweet it, the link and everything, all of a sudden after a second day, I was like, hey, it's still the new show. <laughs> <laughs> so how is I going to engage people in something like this? You know, if a once a week show, how is I going to keep them entertained, basically, you know? So then I thought, okay, well, I want to keep eyeballs on this Twitter account. I mean, on, this, on Real Tailgate. I want to keep people there. How do I keep them there throughout the week? Content. So I reached out to some local bloggers, and I said, hey, guys, would you mind writing a piece once a week about your team, about football, and if I put a blog on Real Tailgate, absolutely. So I added a blog on Real Tailgate, and I got a state writer, an East Carolina writer, a Duke writer, and I paid them 50 bucks a pop, and every week they submitted material. Website stats shot up, because what happened is I would promote it, but then Shane Ryan, who had 10,000 Twitter followers, as soon as he posted that Duke piece, Boom. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Duke Blue Devils Football Club picked it out and retweeted it. And it was just, just started like that. All said and done, it was a successful campaign. We had an 18.9% increase in tailgate sold when it was all said and done. It's so awesome. It was, uh, it was awesome. It really was. And it, um, because that's your most expensive product. Exactly. Sold as well. It wasn't right. like you were selling more iced tea. 8 .9. Increase 18. in tailgates sold. 18.9% increase in his most expensive product. And, and I won't even go to the other things we, we did, like 
uh, photo, photo contests, all kinds of other things, you know. Uh, Instagram, YouTube. I mean, that was just that was the the basis of it. But the key is original content, right? Content's key. Next year rolls around. Okay, Avery, how are you gonna do this again? <laughs> you know, pressure's on. So I was like, okay, the podcast is cool. The guys are gonna come back. All of a sudden, I've got more bloggers on. I've got a real following. Uh, and you know, football seasonal now. And you know, hindsight 2020, uh, I probably would have kept it up more. I left it kind of dormant. Mm -hmm. You know, hindsight 2020, I probably would have had like a monthly update. Hey, you know, so and so recruited. Here's what's going on. So, you know. Um, but I wanted something else different. I wanted something, uh, a separation point. Uh, I wanted another platform. Um, you know, in Smithfields, we got kind of a reputation as a social media leaders, not just in the restaurant business, but in business. So the podcast and Twitter and everything. So uh, there's a woman named Kim Adamoff, uh, who was, a, if you haven't met Kim, she's fantastic. She, yeah, she's a member. Um, yeah. Uh, she was working with me, and, I, and Kim and I have a great relationship. I kind of the ideas guy. She helps execute, you know. And she's just, you know, and I always say she I always saw uh, Kim. She's like the Japanese. She'll take an idea, and make it better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a, you know, that old uh, trope analogy. You know, like, they'll make something, make it better. She's like, well, why don't you do this or that? You know. Uh, so she started talking about Google Plus. Now, you know, full disclosure here. Now, Google Plus, I was a little unsure about. Welcome to the yeah. yeah. This was a year ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No good start. Oh, yeah. It was around this time a year ago. Yep. And I had, uh, and I remember, for me specifically, I don't know about for y'all, it was like three years ago when, when Google Plus really started coming out. There seemed to be this turn and like where people are like, you know, I'm, I'm doing circles. You know, that's a cool thing to do. You know? <laughs> You know, and all of a sudden it kind of died out a little bit. Uh, but then the key is, unlike a lot of other social media platforms, this was Google. <laughs> it's not going away, <laughs> you know. So um, I kind of messed around with it, and then I started taking a po casual poll of uh, friends and professionals and marketers, and I was intrigued by Google Plus because it seemed it was right down the middle. And I equated to, to the New York Yankees. You either loved it or you hated it. And uh, you uh, you were all in or all out. Uh, one of the often comments I got is, I don't want to invest in another social media platform. <coughs> Inversely, a lot of Google Plus told me, I don't want to see, care what my kids' neighbors' diapers look like in the morning. You know? so. It's all of a sudden these social media platforms start developing personalities. You know, LinkedIn is, of course, business. You know, right. Twitter seems kind of more snarky, and Facebook is a little more. It's just these people you know. Yeah, and then Google Plus to me though was interesting because that seemed like people. It was a blend of everything. Because it could get personal, but it could be very business-like, but it could be uh, friendly, and it, it was it was in. I think it had a lot to do with the images. I mean, I was talking to this gentleman here about people see, self, see themselves in images. So I was intrigued by it, and I had an account. But, you know, I just I have a social media routine in the morning. I don't use Hootsuite. I just you know I go through that routine, and Google Plus just wasn't it. So I'm talking to Kim's like, you know, we really need to integrate G Plus into this. And I was like, okay, 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 fine, just do it, do it, do it. And she's like, I need you to meet somebody. Though. <laughs> she's like really good at this. She's an expert. And she's got something called a Google Hangout. I said, "What? A Google Hangout? What's that?" And I did a little research about it, and I equated a Google Hangout to uh, Skype. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it's business. So you're gonna talk to somebody, okay? How can I create this? So I met Nicole, and she actually helped me set up a Google account because I was kind of frustrated, and I was like, "Where do you put this?" And she's like, "Da da da." So, and so she started about this Hangout. And she's like, you know, it's really cool because you can get like four or five people talking about something. And I was like, okay, four or five people talking about something. Hmm. So I could get four or five football bloggers to talk about something. She's like, yeah. So I could get like that television show that comes on ESPN in the afternoon with four or five experts talking about something within the context of our product. So I can get four or five people talking about football. <laughs> 
within the within the uh, lower third with our logo branded on there. So I can get four or five people to talk about whatever I want, whatever I want to do. Boom. The real tailgate football show was launched. And that's what it's a football show. Went in there and uh, it was different from the podcast now. I want to make that specific. It was church and state, podcast, TV show. And it made, made the network look bigger, the whole thing look bigger. And they referenced each other, of course, but it was total church and state, different thing. And had a host, and they just did a round table. They talked about, okay, let's talk about the, the upset last night in Carolina. And again, it, it brought our customers within the context of something they were passionate about, football, sports. I mean, our target market were, were males in this. This is right in their wheelhouse. Um, and again, and the other thing, what I wanted to do also is to record this and be able to show it every week because some people couldn't make it at 9 o'clock. So as soon as the show ended, we edited it, we posted it, and again, that was another thing to promote. So all of a sudden, every day of the week, I could promote a new blog, a new podcast, which behind, uh, it's, uh, hold on from on the podcast, I've actually broke it up instead of an hour, two half-hour shows throughout the week. So all of a sudden, I had so much content going out, it was ridiculous. Had a blog, had a recap on Monday, podcast on Tuesday, hangout on Wednesday, cut and edited version of the hangout on Thursday, podcast on Friday, game day Saturday, leave it alone, Sunday, recap. So I had customers engaged throughout the whole week. And again, with the hangout, the, it was easy to get guests. I didn't have to pay the guests because they love doing it, because they're promoting their own brand. Mm -hmm. You know, Shane Ryan here, I'm a writer for so-and-so, and it was just, you know, they, they loved it, and they'd never done anything like that. And you got to think, there's a lot of people who were bloggers who who were never going to be on television. They, <laughs> they reveled in it, and they talked about something they were passionate about. And, you know, the intro, we had the host talk about, hi, welcome to the Real Tailgate Football Show, sponsored by Spitfield Shake and a Barbecue. Make sure you stop by and visit the Retail Gate Special. So there was that, you know, commercial element was very gentle. You know, it wasn't overpowering at all. And you went in there. And it's like if you listen to any radio show. Mm -hmm. you get that. So we shot it. We did it. We did hangouts. We edited it. And we could track downloads. We could track YouTube hits. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a laundry list of different mechanisms, we could, and it was, and again, when it was all said and done, we had an 8% increase from last year. So a two-year span, 27% increase in sales, and that's how we did it. But the bottom line here um, is, and I think what we, what you have to do, what we have to do is. You know, I think there are a lot of people out like me who think Google Hangout is like Skype, mm -hmm. or it's just used for business. But you can use this vehicle, this platform, for your business. For example, um, you know, it seems like the big thing now is positioning yourself as an expert, hosting a weekly show, a valid topic, inviting people, pe people a circle of influence. You got to think all those people I had on the Hangout. They were promoting it too. Hey, check me out on so and so. Here I talk about. And what was really cool is when some folks would have some exclusive content. Like I was in the Duke locker room last night and I found out about, you know, what really happened there. So again, I, how to use this Google Hangout technology in, in, in a business in a business world. Um, some people get it, obviously, but I do think there's a wide variety of people who don't. Who don't know how to do it, and, and and you have to kind of think about your business and be creative and bring original content. I mean, anybody can sit there and talk about your business, you know, but it's all about getting people involved. The one thing I wish I would have done, which I think you and Kim were was nagging on me about it, and that's a good nag, <laughs> was like getting people involved in the hangout during that because yeah. my thought process was just TV show, you know, cheap TV show. <laughs> I said cheap, you know, inexpensive, you know what I mean, not cheap looking, but inexpensive, really cool, but. I could have made it 
better if that had made more interactive, more social. You know, and I think that's something Jesse is really gifted at. He can bring people in that way. Um, but, uh, but that's the key about taking your original content and putting it into a hangout. And I guess that's why I really wanted to go through the whole strategy in the campaign. It's because before you even think about Google Hangout, before you think about a podcast, before you think about anything, you need to think about your content, your, your separation point, your, your slogan. You know, what makes you, I mean, that, that's my thing. You know, I'm good grief. I'm a dime a dozen, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> you know, but my thing I want to focus on is uh, small businesses and startups and bring that strategic thinking. And that's, that's the dirty secret of advertising. Anybody can make anything look pretty. That's the thought process behind it. So, um, if you're using Google Hangouts to engage with others, to uh, network with others, go for it. You know, if you want to use it as a platform in your business to help promote your business, think about the content. Think about consistency. You know, I think that's what Nicole is really good at. So, like, every Friday, every so and so, we're going to do this time, and people start to look for that. I look for it. I mean, same thing with the podcast too. I remember about three weeks in, we were a day off. With, you know, where's where's the podcast? At? You know, I mean, people start to look for it. So, have a plan and execute it. So, questions? Thank you. We have to answer it. Again, don't get technical on me. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Questions and answers. We have a lot of them here. When you were doing the show. Mm -hmm. Did all the these speakers were they set up with a you know, HD camera and a good microphone and a nice background or were they just in the living room? You know, it's funny you ask that. Um, fortunately, the majority of the folks were pretty savvy, uh, and part of you know we we engaged Nicole to kind of orchestrate this, and she had a uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Basically, had a session with each one, like a test session. Um, and find out what kind of computer you use or if you have a, a device such as this. Um, the background, she was more in advising, like, you know, make sure you're like, you know, have proper lighting and those types of things. Yeah. Now, one gentleman we had, had a lot of fun with, it was uh, James Cole. Yeah. And he, James. So was that, uh, everyone was like, either in their living room or their home office or, you know, in their cubicle. So it was really a talk. It is, and they use that as part of their personality, you know. And so one of the guys worked for graphics design company. Yeah, he lives in Holly Springs, and like one day he put like a prop of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Another day he had like you know like a building. He's like you know the opera's going up in Holly Springs next week. You know, I mean he just had a ball with it. You know, right. but, uh, yeah. So the one consistent piece was that they received a branded. Um, and their Twitter handle was on there too, mm -hmm. so they could engage in them in conversation. So I've, I've um, done some Google Hangouts with some um, groups that, not on air Hangouts, but just Hangout Hangouts. And one of the things that kept me from doing more with Google Hangouts is that we had problems with sound and with the network that were echoes and. It was not a good experience, and so I, I became afraid to try that with my customers. Well, that's funny you say that because we had uh, one issue, the one episode, um, and well, let me let's start over again. First of all, we, we had a we had a test run before each show, and we just make sure we we taped and everything, and then. We uh, we did have one episode. We had, we had to completely scrap. You know, full disclosure, because it worked. But you know, hindsight 2020, it's free, so and I can't really fuss. So <laughs> you know what I mean? So the technical pieces of it. So um, <coughs> so I I use Google Hangouts and I use Zoom and Teams. There are definitely things that you can make sure that you do, and they, they're in the Google guidelines. Like, you know, we can go over this when we're not on air, but you know, your connection matters, your computer matters, um, there's different uh, quality speeds, there are different tricks that you could do where um, you can piggyback off of, you know, various different internet sites. Like, when we ran into those problems, you know, I had Kim tap in, so we were both using right. both internets. Um, so there is, 
you know, basically what Google is doing is they're turning your computer into a TV truck, a more right. TV truck. So that is going to pull a lot of power out of this. So you need to make sure that you don't have any other um, programs running. Okay. I mean, you know, and it's Ronnie Vincer. Um, it's R O N N I E V I N C E R. Ronnie Vincer. Um, he runs a membership site that will teach you how to run successful Hangouts. Um, him and I, we've worked together a lot. He is on the forefront. You know, we, we both work with engineers on Google, in Google to talk about these kinds of things and, and test things out and advise them and whatnot. So he has a membership site where he teaches people how to run these on their own successfully so that basically you don't have to come in and hire someone like me to do it for you. B-I-N-C-E-R. Rami, Marco, and then I-E. And that's a good point, you know, and we... I'm going to go ahead and stop this so that we can just go ahead and talk. And we...